the minority in Finland is Swedish speaking. We, we, we are called Finland Swedes. But uh, we don't come from Sweden. We have uh, been in, in Finland for, for many, many hundred years. You see, Finland belonged to, to, to Sweden for 700 years till 1809. So uh, it's a very long historical and cultural Swedish uh, minority in, in Finland. Uh, do you have your uh, media, uh, TV or, or um, newspaper or radio on, uh, in your for your minority? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, the oldest newspaper in Finland is in Swedish. And it's almost 200 years old, and my paper, Huvusasbladet, was established 1864. So, very, very long traditions. And uh, today we have uh, 12 newspapers in Swedish in Finland. We have two radio channels and one national TV channel. So, uh, I would say that, that uh, we have a quite good representation. And uh, in this media, uh, what, you, uh, what are your basics? Uh, it's a culture or politics or, or everything? Uh, most of the 12 newspapers in Swedish are local. They are writing about local news, cultural news, uh, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, my newspaper is uh, uh, a daily uh, in, in Helsinki, uh, seven days daily. And uh, we are the only one, the only Swedish newspaper in Finland that also cover a lot of national and international news. But of course, also uh, 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 local news in, in, in Helsinki and uh, a lot of uh, Swedish cultural and, 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 and uh, that, that kind of things. Uh, most Almost all of, of, of Finnish, Swedish uh, newspapers are owned by, by foundations. So uh, there isn't uh, the, the economic side is uh, in, in, in that case quite safe. Uh, the owner don't demand a lot of. Uh, Money from 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 the, from the newspapers from 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 the from the companies. Uh, they they see they see the, the newspapers as very important culturally for 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 the the, the Swedes in, in in Finland. So so uh, that's uh, in in a way a difference be, be between our newspapers and and other minority newspapers that we, we, we are really thankful for for the foundations how can you live uh, as minority uh, in uh, Deutschland well today we live very well um, we have a history of, of uh, wars and national rivalry uh, but the, that's many years ago uh, today uh, we live peacefully together. Uh, the Danish minority in Germany, we have our own schools, we have a political party, we have a Danish newspaper and the German population says that it's okay and, and they like it. Uh, they are not using it but they, are like, they like it that we live together with each other today. And that is, uh, that is very important, that we, that we today accept each other and, and even support each other. We are, we are, uh, you have a constitution for the northern Germany area called Schleswig-Holstein, where, where Dan Danish uh, and the Danish minority is, is, uh, is uh, the rights of our minority is, is, uh, is uh, described. And that's why we today after many, many years of, of uh, conflicts, uh, live peacefully together. Uh, what you have uh, from media? Do you have newspapers, TV, radio? How many? Uh, it's it's uh, local or region TV newspapers? Flensburg uh, is a very old newspaper, since 1869. We are almost 150 years old. Uh, and for many years only a newspaper, but uh, for the last few years we are doing radio as well. Uh, and we are doing TV uh, as well, not a TV station, but we do 
radio uh, news and broadcast them on a German uh, news uh, radio station. And the TV we do, we, we send it to, to uh, broadcasters in Denmark. And, and of course, Facebook and our own, uh, our own web. You are here in Novi Sad uh, uh, in this conference. What are your experience? Uh, what you see uh, in uh, Vojvodina minority media? And what are the parallel? Do you, ha do you can uh, see any parallel between the Vojvodina minority media and uh, uh, Denmark uh, minority media? And uh, what are your um, suggestions how we can uh, go further? Uh, I must admit I don't know the details of, of, of the situation here in, in Vojvodina. Um, what I learned yesterday is that uh, you have more than one uh, minority, you have, you have uh, different cultures here and different languages. We learned uh, about a school where, where they learn four or five languages. In my area it's just Danish or German. So uh, to me that sounds uh, a bit more complicated, uh, but, but the key to living peacefully together is that everybody must accept each other. The majority must accept the rights of a minority. Uh, if that is the case, then the minority can prosper and, and live, uh, live their minority life without, uh, without harming the majority. But, but as long as the majority doesn't accept the minority, you will have conflicts, uh, maybe not uh, uh, in, in wars, but, but in the minds of people. So, so, so uh, that would be a key uh, to, to living peacefully together. Uh, and uh, do you have uh, any suggestions uh, in, um, in a future time, uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, projects uh, with Vojvodina mi minority media and Denmark minority media uh, together have some, some projects? Um, I don't know about this region. We have within the European Minority uh, Newspaper Association Midas, we have, we have some cooperation. Uh, uh, we are six or seven medias who, who are capable of speaking German and we actually exchange articles. So, so I know what, what is going on in, in South Tyrol and, 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 uh, and uh, such things. Um, and that's very interesting for my minority readers to hear about how is it going on in, in, in other regions in, in Europe. Um, and um, the way you can cooperate is that if you have the resources, you should have a minority reporter in your staff who is interested in what is going on in the other minority regions. We have that in Flensburg East. And, and that would be a suggestion uh, for, for you. I don't know what, what, you are, what your resources are, but, but that is very interesting to hear uh, wh where, uh, what are the other minorities doing? Are they, are they better off? Are they worse off? Uh, what can we learn from them? Describe the process of digitalization in your media and what are the challenges regarding that issue? What are your readers' tendencies? Do they prefer print or online version? Well, uh, at Flensburg we, we uh, will go on doing both. Uh, we have uh, readers, uh, mainly elderly, but also in the 40s and in the 50s who still prefer reading in print. Uh, and uh, of course we have a younger generation who does not read us in print but, but prefers to read us online and, and, and we are we are doing both. Uh, the printed copy uh, of Lensburg is uh, published Monday through Saturday, six days a week and online we are uh, all days uh, a week, uh, seven in the morning to 10 p.m. in the, in the, in the night. Uh, that's, that's a challenge you have even being a very small media that you you have to deal with both audiences, that, uh, uh, which means digital and print. So you said that your readership is quite old, so how do you solve the problem of bringing younger readers to your newspapers? Do you use social media and how do you use your means to bring them? Yes, we are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, we are on Instagram. Uh, and. Uh, 
On Facebook, I think we have uh, 15,000 following us. The printed newspaper is uh, less than 5,000. When I tweet, uh, I have uh, over 1,000 followers. Sometimes uh, 30, 40,000 see, see my tweets. So publishing today, either, either you're a minority or, or, or a normal newspaper, it's the same. You have to be on, on several platforms. Uh, um, and, and meeting your readers where the readers are and, and, and some readers uh, are still on print uh, in Germany, in northern Germany they will still be for, I don't know, 10, 20 years uh, but, but you have to reach out surely for the, the younger readers as well because if you don't you will be out of the market. So uh, the, the printed uh, newspaper is now a minimum uh, Paper. Uh, the Saturday edition is, is is big, but but Monday through Friday it's it's a it's, it's a rather thin newspaper because we have to shift some uh, resources to online to do that better. Because there we are from from early morning to to late night, uh, seven days a week. Uh, that's that's a challenge you have to face, and it's very difficult because we do not want to make. Uh, the printed newspaper uh, uh, less uh, of, of less quality than what we do online and and so so people are well uh, very flexible and working uh, working uh, hard and many hours but but uh, together with this decision to to uh, increase uh, digital uh, efforts and 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 diminish print a little bit we did buy a new software where we can produce to all platforms, including the printing newspaper, in in one uh, in one uh, 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 how do you say that in English? In one one piece of work. So so you don't have to do first the print and then some online and then some Twitter. We we have a very automized system, and that's that's uh, I think a cr very crucial because otherwise you die from stress by having to deal with all these. Uh, different types of, of, of telling your, your new stories. That's great. So you, you definitely plan on sizing up when the situation gets good or will all, how do you think that this is proven with your readers, this sizing down of the print edition? They have uh, accepted it. Um, of course, we have a shift of generation as well in, in, the, in, in the Danish minority in, in northern Germany. Um, they acknowledge that that we try to keep the, the printed uh, newspaper for, for the readers who prefer that and they, they accept that we have to do more uh, in, in, in producing digital content to, to meet the younger generations. So, so, so far it's going well um, and, and uh, as, as I see it we will, we will do both for, for an, uh, a number of years. Uh, I'm, I'm not ready to say that in five years we we will close down the, the printed newspaper because as a minority media maker you must uh, always think about it's not just producing some news, it's about keeping minority coherence, uh, to keep people together within these small entities of, of small minorities. So so we will do everything what uh, what it takes to, 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 to produce content on the relevant platforms in order to talk to everybody in the minority, whether you are 18 or just on Instagram or whether you are 85 and, and just on uh, print. That's, that's the, the hard work. First, we will talk about some general issues that pretty much every media faces these days. So, uh, please describe the process of digitalization in your media. What are the challenges regarding this issue and what are your readers' tendencies? Do they prefer online or print? Uh, well, uh, we are uh, pretty much aware that uh, our uh, digital edition readers and uh, print edition readers are groups that uh, really do not overlap. Uh, so uh, the main uh, issue with the digitalization, as uh, always I think, is monetization of the process. So it's uh, not uh, really difficult nor very costly to put uh, all your content in the internet. But uh, the bigger challenge is uh, actually uh, earning money that way. Thank you. And how do you solve the problem of bringing young readers to your newspapers? And how do you manage social media as a means of communication to your younger readers and potential readers? Uh, well, we, we use social media uh, mostly for brand building. But uh, we also understood that if we want to uh, approach new readers, we have to actually uh, come to them physically. 
So we try to be uh, present uh, during community events uh, on uh, various, uh, how do you call them, uh, agricultural feasts uh, in the autumn and so on, so that uh, people know that we are there and that we are with them. Uh, as a newspaper, especially national minority newspaper, uh, has uh, not only informational role, but its main role actually is uh, to be uh, an institution of uh, local society. Without being institution and part of the society, uh, such a newspaper will not survive. Thank you. In 2018, you were talking about a magazine that you were launching. So how did that turn out? What, what are the results now? Uh, well, it uh, has slowed down the decline of the print edition and uh, also shown our potential partners and sponsors that uh, despite being a national minority, we are able to make a good-looking professional magazine that uh, is able to also be attractive to uh, younger readers and uh, also to readers that are not our main uh, group of interest, meaning that uh, not only Polish people in Lithuania, but also uh, Lithuanians, Polish people in Poland, and uh, also Polish communities uh, from other countries uh, look up uh, to us uh, as a success story. Okay, so the, and regarding the topic of the third European conference devoted to minority media, it was the topic was minority media as a tourism, tourism development resource. It was said that minority media newspapers, their articles about touristic places or spots uh, can reach a lot of people by informing tourists from their from native countries. For example, you can write uh, Poles from Poland can read in Polish about a touristic place in Lithuania. So with this proven to show, uh, this proven to have shown good results, do you feel that you actively or even passively take part in the development of tourism in your region? Well, not at this point, as uh, f for the most uh, of the year the borders were closed. The uh, Polish-Lithuanian border opened up again only in the end of uh, June. But uh, we are aware that uh, there is a huge potential for such developments uh, that uh, we are not tapped into yet. But uh, one should also be aware that uh, there are not only Poles in Poland. There are almost 10 million Polish Americans living in the United States of America. So that's also a huge group which we can reach uh, mostly through the social media, through the internet. So that's also one of uh, the potential benefits for digitalization. We know that uh, this does not apply to every uh, n n nation in the world because not everybody has a huge uh, community of compatriots in the United States. Uh, so uh, those uh, challenges and those possibilities are quite unique to each, na each nation. Beh, noi siamo ancora in pieno processo di digitalizzazione e abbiamo fatto un investimento di questo genere anche dovuto al alla condizione eh, posta dalla, dalla legge che, ci, che richiede no? il passaggio anche sul, 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 sul web. Eh, stiamo, stiamo, stiamo per rinnovare la pagina internet, eh, stiamo lavorando sul fatto che questa pagina internet sia complementare col giornale stampato, che sia un, un secondo media, per cui anche noi come tutti gli altri giornali siamo già dei multimedia, e poi la digitalizzazione presuppone che anche la redazione si riorganizzi, diventi una, una redazione, ciò che si dice una redazione integrata, per cui tutti i redattori, tutti i giornalisti sono in grado di lavorare sulle diverse piattaforme, lavorano sul, sulla stampato, sul, sul web, sulle applicazioni, sui vari, sui, sui vari social. È comunque un processo che, che è tuttora in corso, che penso che concluderemo entro un anno, un anno e mezzo. E i giovani uh, come uh, prendono uh, Primorski, vengono sul, sul sito uh, di, di Primorski, come adesso la situazione? Sì, noi comunque cerchiamo sempre di promuovere soprattutto eh, il giornale cartaceo perché ha questa lunga tradizione oltre, di oltre 70 anni per cui anche distribuiamo il giornale nelle scuole e cerchiamo di insegnare, no? di formare il nuovo lettore anche sul giornale cartaceo. 
e ci rendiamo conto che comunque per una giovane persona è sicuramente più appetibile, più attraente eh, qualsiasi altro media digitale e c'è una risposta, c'è una risposta su internet, abbiamo, mh, dai dati che abbiamo il giornale si legge soprattutto sui, sui, tele, sui, sui smartphone, sui cellulari, e, mh, pochi due mesi fa, non di più, siamo usciti con le nuove applicazioni per i smartphone e per i tablet, un'applicazione che ci permette poi la lettura molto gradevole del, del giornale stampato. E adesso siamo in una fase di, di promozione, abbiamo fa, facendo anche una campagna. Comunque sì, c'è una risposta. Uh, ieri abbiamo sentito uh, un, uh, che le medie delle minoranze sono benvenute di collaborare con le città europee di, della cultura e questa è una uh, buona notizia. Che dici di questo? Allora, io ho collaborato nella, nella preparazione della candidatura di, di Nova Gorizia e Gorizia Gorizia. E faccio parte del gruppo perché fin da, dall'inizio Nova Gorizia ha coinvolto la minoranza slovena in Italia e io un po' l'ho rappresentata, per cui ho vissuto tutto il processo di preparazione della candidatura e fin dall'inizio abbiamo uh, proposto uh, come minoranza, che in qualche modo rappresentavo, abbiamo proposto che anche Midas e i giornali delle minoranze venissero inseriti. Il primo Skidneoni in, in, in quella fase ha anche proposto un proprio progetto, eh, il progetto era di, 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 di realizzare un giornalino della, della Capitale della Cultura eh, che, lo, che, lo, eh, che verrà confezionato da una redazione multilingue composta da giovani giornalisti di varie testate. Ecco, questo è un progetto che è stato presentato dalla Capitale cultura, della Cultura di Gorizia Nova Gorizia nel, per il 2025. E, e, e poi il, il stesso, eh, gli organizzatori della Capitale, chi ha pre preparato la candidatura, poi ha fatto sì, ha invitato Midas a, a promuoverla in Europa e come abbiamo sentito in assemblea del Midas è stato anche invitato, e questa associazione è stata invitata a, a, a realizzare la, la propria assemblea nel 2025 proprio a Nova Gorizia e Gorizia. E ultima domanda, siamo nel eh, supposto molto particolare eh, anche per Primorsky Dnevnik, anche per tutte le medie secondo me, eh, perché siamo dentro nel, nel bosco dove era stampato il primo giornale eh, de, della liberazione diciamo. Sì, siamo nel punto in cui il Primorsky Neonic è iniziato a nascere oppure siamo nel punto in cui è nato il padre del Primorsky Neonic perché in questa tipografia in mezzo ai boschi che per un anno ha sfornato eh, oltre un milione di pubblicazioni eh, si stampava il, il Partizansky Neonic, il quotidiano partigiano uh, il primo maggio del 1945 questo quotidiano smette di uscire si trasferisce a Trieste, esce per alcuni giorni a Trieste con questa testata, poi il 13 maggio del 1945 esce già col nome di Primo Schidneonic. Per cui qui siamo un po' nel, nel luogo uh, di nascita. No? E, e la cosa che um, ci segna più, di più è il fatto che la nostra testata uh, sia nata nella testata nella Trieste liberata, è nata da una necessità di ritrovare e riconquistare la libertà. Ecco, questo penso che sia anche la, la cifra, il segno del nostro giornale.